Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pramod Malik from Department of Laws, Bhagat Phool Singh Mahila Vishwidyale, Khanpur Kala, Haryana. Today, we are going to discuss one of the important topic of law that is intellectual property rights. So, we can say that intellectual property rights play a very important role nowadays. We can see there are number of examples where we are using intellectual property rights every day. From morning to evening and from our birth to death, we use millions or billions of intellectual property rights in our life. There is different types of property or there is a transformation in the, in the property, in the concept of property. From ancient time, we believe in uh, the property as a slaves. Chattels or slaves were treated as a property in ancient time. So, when time changes, people believe to uh, use this real estate as a property, for example, lands, buildings are treated as a property. A person who is more land than other, another person was treated as a rich person. Similarly, the person who has a more these slaves or chattels were treated as a uh, these rich person in ancient time. But time changes and industrialization process was started. Now, shares and debentures, bonds treated as a corporeal property. So, now after the enforcement of this World Trade Organization or in 1850s, in mid of 19th century, these intellectual property rights are came into pictures. Now, a person who has a some patents or some uh, these uh, copyrights or design in his name, they are richer than any other person. We can take example of these some countries or some people who are rich. For example, J K Rowling. J K Rowling is a rich woman. Why? Because she has uh, written Harry Potter series. Similarly, we can see the Facebook owner, or we can see here these uh, Microsoft owner Bill Gates, or we can also see the Sabir Bhatia who has invented Hotmail.com. So these people are richer not because of some natural resources, not because of any other these thing, but they are richer because they have intellectual property in their name. So, we can also take example of some developed countries also. For example, Japan, Korea or the Switzerland, Germany, these countries are equal to our these states Haryana or Punjab in geographical area, but uh, they are developed countries. Why? Because not of natural resources or not of any other thing, but they are developed, they are rich countries because they have intellectual property in their names. This 40 percent, more than 40 percent of GDP are coming from the, the intellectual property rights in the form of patents, in the form of royalties or licenses. So, we can see there is lot of importance of intellectual property rights in our life. So, as Adam Smith, this states that there are four factors of production uh, in ancient time, but nowadays because of intellectual property, four factor production, land, labor, money or entrepreneur are not these important, but we need only pen or paper or one laptop with internet. So, we can create a uh, number of things, number of intellectual property with our mind. We can take example of Ola Uber, these apps are also there, blah blah app is there or the persons who has created www by tin burner lee or we can also see number of other uh, these uh, where is my train or number of people who has invented or created a new uh, these apps or new inventions they are now richer because of just mere creating one app so in our childhood we were taught ki knowledge is increased by sharing but nowadays we are seeing we have to kept secret our knowledge. Why? Because knowledge is commodified. 
nowadays we have a knowledge economy the as we have already discussed these developed countries are developed as compared to under developing or developing countries because of their knowledge economy so there is lot of uh, these value to this intellectual property so now we are going to start the definition of intellectual property so we can define this intellectual property a property which is created by our mind so this is a property this uh, word intellectual property organization define this intellectual property as this ip refer to the creation of the mind such as inventions literary and artistic work designs and symbol names and images used in the commerce as these all these things symbol names or these artistic work or literary work or these inventions when it has been commodified or used in a commerce they are treated as intellectual property so now we can uh, this go for the types of these properties there are two types of properties industrial property and non industrial property under industrial property we can say there are six types first one is a patent second one is trademark third one is this uh, design fourth one is a geographical indication of goods and fifth one we can say semiconductor integrated circuits layout design and sixth one is protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act so these are called industrial property because these must have some inventive steps and another one is non industrial property under non industrial property we can includes copyright and related rights why this copyright is included under this non uh, this industrial property because it includes artistic work it includes this literary work also you can make uh, write some poem or write some story in your uh, rough uh, notebook or register also you can uh, make some songs lyrics of some song also so uh, there is another right related rights also with the copyright so these related rights cover performer rights and uh, these uh, broadcasting rights we will discuss in detail in next uh, this lecture relating to copyright so we can also compare this intellectual property with the physical property as there are some characteristics of this uh, physical property similarly this intellectual property has the same characteristics of intellectual property for example it can be owned by someone it can be sold it can be alienated in the form of we can say license or mortgage so but one important difference between this is linear algebra is not applicable on intellectual property so how we can say it is rival in nature it is physical property is rivals in nature but intellectual property is non rivalous in nature what it means for example if i have one copy of one particular movie i have written some novel so another person can also get photocopy or can scanned copy of that and it can be distributed to a students of a class or we can send any uh, movie to number of persons so what it means it can be consumed by lots of person but in the in the case of physical property it can be owned by more than one people or more than two people but here it intellectual property can be consumed by number of people irrespective of this as i told you the linear algebra is not applicable for example 1 plus 1 plus 1 not equal to 3 under physical property 1 plus 1 plus 1 equal to 3 but under intellectual property 1 plus 1 plus 1 equal to 1 as for example i am the owner of particular ip and i can distribute to a number of people uh, it may be hundred or thousands but this linear algebra we can say uh, i may own that particular property but it can be distributed to the other uh, lots of people also so that is a beauty of intellectual property rights so now i want to discuss with you some features of intellectual property so some uh, these features are as already we discuss this is a property which can be created by our mind so second most important thing relating to intellectual property is it is intangible in nature what it means tangible means which can be touched or which can be seen but here this 
intellectual property cannot be touched or seen as it is intangible in nature. Second is it is incorporeal in nature. What it means here? Th this same thing, same meaning is there. For example, physical property, it can be in the tangible form, but intellectual property, it may be in the form of intangible, for example, patents or designs. So, here another important aspect of IP is it is just like a monopoly right or exclusive right. Monopoly right means specifically the owner of intellectual property can exclude whole world from using that. Monopoly right is granted uh, to that particular person who has invented a new thing or exclusive right granted to a person who has created a new thing. For example, in copyright exclusive right is given and in the case of patents monopoly right is given to that particular inventor. So, it is uh, another uh, this uh, characteristic of this intellectual property is this is statutory property. What it means? This special acts are there of intellectual property rights. For example, for patent, patent acts 1970 is there, in copyright, copyright acts 1957 is there, in geographical indication of goods, uh, this uh, 1999 act is there. So, special acts are there relating to that. Otherwise, the, if these acts are not there, what it means? These property cannot exist. Somebody said that the law and property born together were born together and would die together. So, what it means? These property rights are is a creation of particular statute or particular act. So, these uh, some IP species are territorial in nature also. What it means? Ki the jurisdiction or the uh, domain of particular intellectual property rights are these we can say territorial. For example, if you have a patent or that is registered in India. So, you have only uh, this rights in Indian territory only. If you want to uh, this protect your intellectual property in uh, this USA or Pakistan, you have again registered your this patent in Pakistan as well as in USA also. So, these are territorial in nature that is why. So, this is also called positive rights positive property right, what it means? It these IP right help us to make contribution in the society in the form of cultural rights, in the form of other, other rights also. For example, some inventions help us uh, to uh, we can say uh, fight with particular uh, these diseases also. Some person has invented a new form of medicine for cancer or for AIDS. So, it helps that is why it is called positive in character. Some co uh, these copyright of literary work or the artistic work help us to express our culture uh, domain also. So, that is why it is called positive in nature. It is also called negative in nature. Why? As we have discussed these are monopoly right or exclusive right. So, by monopoly right one person has a monopoly on particular uh, these property for limited period of time. For that particular nature, uh, it exclude whole world from using that, whole world from using that property. So, that is why it is called negative in nature. So, it is also called limited in nature or not absolute in character. What it means? For example, if you have created a new literary thing or you have created some invention, so for patent will be granted to that for 20 years. The, what it means? 20 years is granted to you for that particular property for patent and lifetime plus 60 year is granted for uh, copyright. So, what it means? After expiration of that uh, these uh, patent or copyright, that particular invention or the your creative work literary or artistic go to the public domain. So, from that any person from public can use that intellectual property after expiration of time. That is why it means it is limited in character. If some patent is granted to you or copyright is granted to you or it means you have monopoly right or you have exclusive right. But it does not mean you are a king, you are a absolute king 
or absolute owner of that particular thing. I want to quote one other example. For example, you have a license of motor vehicle. So, for that license, it, license is not given to you by the Indian government for unlimited period. In your license, you can see there is one term valid up to. Your license is given to you for 15 years or 20 years. After that expiration period, you have to renew your license for riding some bike or uh, this car. So, and another aspect is here when you have you got your this license for motor vehicle, you have to follow the rules and regulations for that. Otherwise, a fine will be there, penalty will be there. So, for that what it means these licenses are limited in character. So, you cannot ride your bike at the rate of 100 km per hour or 120 km per hour. So, you are not allowed. So, similarly under intellectual property rights although monopoly or exclusive right granted to you, but this does not mean you are the king or you are absolute owner you have to follow the rules and regulations certain exceptions are there in different these IP laws whether in uh, these uh, patent act some uh, compulsory licensing provisions are also there in patent or doctrine of fair dealing is also there in uh, section 52 of copyright act 1957. So, another uh, characteristic of this IP is it can be alienated it can be sold, it can be mortgage, it can be give license. So, just like a physical property we can make it alienated. So, it is also based on the principle of quid pro quo. What it means? So, quid pro quo means for something in return. So, for example, some people are putting their hard work, putting their labor, investing money and so many failures are also there. So, after that they are coming with new invention or new work. So, what must be given to them? They are helping us in the society for fighting with some diseases also or creating some new literature also. For that state is giving them monopoly right or state is giving them exclusive right for certain time period. So, for that this is a principle quid pro quo means it is given on the basis of uh, something written, something must be given in the form of reward or in the form of some other thing. So, under this intellectual property rights monopoly or exclusive, exclusive right is given for limited period of time. So, for protection of these intellectual property laws specific acts were passed. IPR is genus or journal in nature, but different types are there as we already discussed these uh, industrial property or non-industrial property. So, specific acts were passed by the government of India enacted by government of India to protect the rights of the author or inventor or designer or all these person community rights under these and uh, to and remedies are there in, in uh, for the infringement of these rights. So, first one is under these specific acts. Indian Patent Act 1970. So, it was passed by the government of India in 1970 for uh, protection of patent. Second act is which trademark act 1999. So, th although this act was there in 1958, but after this independent this uh, government of India after the uh, coming uh, of world trade organization uh, trademark act was passed in 1999. Another act is Copyright Act, which is part of non-industrial property, which was passed in 1957 or so many latest amendments were also there. For example, in 2012 rights of disabled persons were also protected under that or so many other rights of performers or copyright societies rights were also protected in 2012. So, another act is Design Act, which was passed in 2000. Design covers the outer appearance of things, outer appearance means which appeal to our eyes. So, we will discuss in detail in, in another slide. So, another act is geographical indication of goods, which was sister concern of trademark act as trademark given to the one individual one particular company, but here 
G i it is it can be given to the community, it can be given to one particular village or it can be given to a group of person, it can be given to a district, group of district, state more than one or two states or it can be given to a country or more than one country. So, G i important aspect we will discuss in detail in uh, next uh, few slides. So, after that another this act is protection of plant varieties act. Here some plant varieties are there extant which are which can be patented. So, although patent act is also there, but separate um, plant variety act is also passed by government of India on the basis of few generis. We will discuss in detail uh, in another slide here protection is also given to the these plant varieties. Here in this act farmers rights are also protected. This act was passed in 2001 by government of India. So, another important act is semiconductor integrated circuits layout design act. Although design act is also there uh, which was passed in 2000, but semiconductor which are uh, in the form of motherboard some integrated circuits are also there. So, for that protection of those this semiconductor these uh, this IC layout design act was also passed in 2000. So, these are the special acts passed by the government of India pro for encouraging the creators or inventors or we can say here for uh, this protection as well as giving the remedies for in the case of infringement and registration of these intellectual property rights. So, what are the objective of intellectual property rights? Why one should go for the intellectual property rights? Why one should put his hard work, invest money, putting his time also, this uh, day and night he is uh, working hard for uh, these uh, inventing something new which is uh, good for society. So, this IP is giving the legal protection, these IP acts are giving the legal protection to these owners who has invented new thing or created some uh, new copyright works. So, it also prevent unauthorized use. For example, although registration is not compulsory some IPs, but it is advisable you should go for the this registration of that. Although registration is not compulsory in copyright and, and trademark act, but in spite of no non registration law also help you for protection of your original work. So, it is also help in economic development of nation. So, we have already discussed so many developed countries which are small in geographical area are developed because of intellectual poverty as 40 percent of their intellectual uh, these uh, this GDP is coming from the royalties or licenses. So, that is beauty of intellectual property. So, government also wants to uh, this protect intellectual property rights. So, that our Indian government has also passed national intellectual property right policy in 2016 for protection uh, of making awareness of intellectual property rights in India. So, there are different theories in relation to these intellectual property. So, many different opinions are also given by this uh, different jurist, different political thinkers. So, here first uh, I want to discuss some, some theories relating to intellectual property rights. So, this is one theory which is called utility theory. As we have discussed in political science also or in different social science also, in law also, ki utility theory is given by the Jeremy Bentham and G. S. Mill. So, what they are saying there must be greatest happiness or maximum happiness of maximum number of people. So, here someone invented a new thing for all of us. So, some in patent also some utility must be there one of the essential of this registration of patent is uh, utility there. So, when someone is given uh, utility to the society we are also giving protection to that intellectual property on the basis of quid pro quo. So, they are justifying intellectual property a simple property as in the form of utility. So, uh, and second theory is also is same as uh, just like a inventive theory that is also reward theory ki we have to give reward to the inventor or the creator of a particular copyright work in the form of monopoly or the exclusive right 
for limited period of time. So, that is covered under this reward theory. So, another aspect is labor theory, which was propounded by the John Locke and the this Lasky and Spencer. What they are saying? Ki all these properties are natural, belongs to everyone. So, if someone is creating a new thing out of the existing property, he is entitled for that property. So, God has given uh, all these property for all of us. So, someone is putting his uh, mind to that particular, uh, we can say creating new property out of public domain also. This using his own mind that must be protected as per labor or natural law theory. So, another aspect is personality theory. So, under this it is propounded by a uh, given by this Hegel and Kant. So, personality theory what we can say the person who is creating a new thing or writing some novel, he is incorporating his personality into that particular theory. What it means? Ki this is metaphysical in nature. See some you can take example of someone who is successful, but after so many failures, his personality is also incorporated in that as per Hegel that personality theory must be we can say this protected by the intellectual property or it is also in the form of intellectual property. So, as per Hegel that rights must be protected. So, another concept Jenks saying ki property is creation of the state. Although state is one of the main stakeholder in all these things in everything as we are discussing uh, this intellectual property rights are in statutory nature, statutory rights are there as these rights are given by statute or act. So, similarly, this property is also creation of state. So, what he believes the property and law are born together and would die together. What it means when property is existing, it is because of law and it will die because of law. So, the, all these properties are there which are related in these and different theories are also related to that, but the main thing is no theory is perfect, every theory has its own advantage and disadvantage. So, we can also think or we can use this tailor cutting method, whatever is good for us, we can take from that and what is bad for that, we can cut that for and use best part of it. So, these are the different theories of intellectual property rights or we can say these uh, property also, because John Locke or other these people has given these theories 200 years back, whether these are relevant to intellectual property or not, it is a matter of time, we can uh, reconsider these for intellectual property rights. So, similarly, I want to discuss this Indian constitutional perspective also, although this Indian constitution is not directly protected the intellectual property or there are some articles are there which are related to the properties, in general property, but for intellectual property although there is no direct concern, but preamble is also saying you are protecting the uh, these states about the economic justice. So, economic justice is only possible when we protect the right of inventors, when we protect the right of some corporate in the form of trademark, when we protect the right of some uh, writer or right of poet or right of producer or right of any uh, these particular IP holders. So, how can we protect this? When we protect this in form of some special statute that is uh, just as they are we can say the, these are the economic justice. So, these IP laws are also economic laws. So, because lots of economics are there, these are also called economic rights. So, here preamble is also protecting indirectly the rights of all these persons who are creating or inventing new things. So, second important aspect is fundamental right under Indian constitution. Although article 19 which protect the this simple property was repealed and now article 300 is there which protect the property rights. So, we can say this property right although is not fundamental right, but we can say this property right is now a constitutional right. So, under directive 
uh, this policy uh, directive principle of state policy we are also saying about the or these fundamental duties are also there we can say the excellence comes only after existence so unless and until we are giving protection to these authors we are giving protection to these inventors so all these persons are protected under directive principle of state policy and it's our fundamental duty also under article 51 what it says this uh, we have all fundamental duty in the form of what it saying strive towards excellence in all sphere of life so that our nation constantly rises to higher level of endeavor so it's our fundamental duty also it's a fundamental rights uh, we can say directly or indirectly all these things are relating to intellectual property so but under list we can say list 1 under union list uh, of seventh schedule entry 49 it is specifically related with this uh, intellectual property rights what it saying it recognizes ipr as mentioning in, in this uh, entry 49 of schedule 7 patents inventions designs copyright trademark and mercantile marks all these things are recognized as intellectual property uh, we can say entry 49 of schedule 7 of list 1 so it is giving the authority to the central government for to legislate on the matter as per article 246 of the indian constitution what it means here ki directly the constitution is not protecting the ip intellectual property but indirectly it has given the consent and side by side different laws different acts are there to protect the these intellectual property rights in the form of patent act copyright act trademark act or design act so many acts are there these seven acts are there to protect these intellectual property so under this uh, we have already discussed these preamble article uh, 300a and this article 19 freedom of speech and expression article 14 right to equality is there and article 21 right to life and personal liberty all these articles or the provisions of indian constitution directly or indirectly protect the rights of author and rights of inventor so uh, this indian constitution or the ip law are we can say are both protecting or this ip laws are legitimate or constitutional in nature so there are few judgments also where the, the supreme court has done commendable work to protection of intellectual property we will discuss if time left there are very good judgments which are given by the delhi high court and uh, honorable supreme court of india which protect the intellectual property rights of particular author or inventor see in the one case in 1970 this rc cooper versus union of india this it specifically given that is also called bank nationalization case what it says what was held by this court property it defines property property means the highest right of a man can have to anything being that right which one has to lands or tenements or goods or chattels which does not depend on other courtesy what is saying it is protecting the physical property but side by side what it says it includes ownership states and interest in corporeal things as well as rights such as trademark copyright patents so in 1970 this in rc cooper case supreme court has also included this incorporeal property with the corporeal property so it has given the its own assent or consent to recognize the rights of the author or the we can say these Uh, patentees so in and even rights in personam capable of transfer or transmission these rights can be transferred as we have already discussed these rights can be alienated it can be transferred in case of sale or we can say mortgage or license all these things are covered under this so it has its own significance or benefactor so this is a very important judgment where supreme court has recognized the rights of patentee or the trademark holder 
or we can say copyright owner. So, um, another important case is KT Plantation Private Limited versus State of Kerala. It is in this. Uh, this Supreme Court has given judgment in 2011, where Supreme Court held the property, everything is based on property in Article 300 A, which was 17, 44th this amendment in 1978. This Article 19 specific clause was, this article was inserted in, in the form of 300 A, which confined not only to land not only land alone, but includes intangible property like copyright and other intellectual property and embraces every possible interest recognized by law. So, by these two judgments, we can say the Supreme Court has done commendable job in the interest of these intellectual property rights also. So, the, uh, from these two cases, we can say Indian government, Indian courts or Indian constitutional uh, indirectly recognize the rights of these intellectual property rights owners. So, now I am coming to species different types of intellectual property rights, where we can say one of the important form is uh, this patent. So, patent means open, we can, we can say that latent means hidden and patent means open. What it says? So, patent is a monopoly right, we can say is a statutory right, which is granted to the owner, to the particular inventor by the state, state here is a government for limited period of time. So, this is a monopoly right, we can say this is also statutory right also. So, here in it is exchange of disclosure of invention, as we have already discussed this principle of quid pro quo, something in return. If someone is putting his labor or hard work or money or time and coming out with new invention. So, in exchange of that and he is disclosing that invention to whole world, to whole society. So, government in exchange of that giving him monopoly right. So, it is a principle of quid pro quo. So, time period of patent is 20 years, different time periods are there for different intellectual property rights. So, time period is 20 years here and before 1970 different 14 years, 7 year time period is there, but after WTO in whole world 20 years is there for patent. So, one exception is also there in patent compulsory licensing, I am just giving you overview of this patent. In another lecture we will discuss the, the whole uh, patent uh, these concept. So, one exception is there as we have already discussed with you, this uh, patent is limited right, not absolute right. So, that is why this one exception is there in the form of compulsory licensing. So, uh, no one can say ki I am the king of that particular patent, if there is no accessibility of that invention, if there is no affordability or in the interest of public policy, government can take away this patent from that particular patentee, if there is no accessibility or affordability or in against the public policy. So, another important concept under this patent is date of priority. What it means? It means the person who file a patent on first date will be recognized as a patentee. If someone is invented first, but file this registration uh, after that, but the person who filed first will get the first. That is the main principle. It is statutory recognized principle, first to file, first to get under patent act. So, here in this specific form of intellectual property, registration of patent is compulsory. So, you can become rich, you can earn billions of rupees by registration of patent, you can give license to that uh, uh, of that particular patent. You can take number of examples and so many times people are also relinquish that particular thing. I want to quote example here, this uh, uh, the person who has this invented a ring pool can or oh, the person belong to Canada, he uh, got 2.5 lakh dollar per day because he has invented a ring pool can, you can use in beer, we can use in soft drink, we can use in uh, liquor also, we can uh, we are using in these uh, uh, farm and uh, medicines also. So, there are so many examples from where we can say or we can also take example of Alfred Nobel. Alfred Nobel was richest person 
in uh, 1930s 40s why because he has invented uh, dynamite so that's why he earned billions of dollar at that time and after that he has started the nobel prize in his name by earning lot of money by uh, getting patent of these uh, these dynamite so that's why i am saying registration is compulsory after registration you have prima facie evidence and you have the right to get royalty by giving license to different people so what are the essentials of patent now i want to discuss three essentials simple essentials are there the thing must be new that you have invented a thing that must be no, uh, some novelty some new thing must be there uh, it should not be known uh, the obvious it should be known obvious in nature some utility must be there that is usefulness and another concern is some it must be capable of inventive step some inventive step must be there after that you can say you are eligible for getting patent of particular invents so there is some historical background but we will discuss in next uh, lecture about this historical background of patent we just say there are three major amendments in indian patent act 1970 as we have to comply with the uh, world trade organization trips agreement uh, for that we have this amended our act in 1999 2002 and 2005 so we will discuss in detail in next lecture and uh, we have also started this we have enacted this indian patent act uh, in 1970 uh, on the recommendations of uh, this bakshi tekchand and justice ayengar committee's recommendations so we will discuss in uh, detail in uh, next lecture so another uh, type of intellectual property is trademark so trademark also play very important role for protection of goodwill of uh, we can say particular company we can take example of tata tata in few months back tata is going to uh, this uh, buy uh, this uh, bisleri company for rupees 7000 crores why tata uh, himself uh, open its own factory or own company at uh, 100 uh, these crore or we can say uh, 50 crores or 200 crores but he has uh, going to invest 7000 crores for bisleri company why because bisleri has its own goodwill so under trademark uh, we can say it uh, has its own importance so many companies are there their trademark or goodwill is more than their physical assets so here we can define trademark is a mark which is represented graphically or which can distinguish the goods and services of one company from another from one person to another person from one entrepreneur to another entrepreneur so it uh, help us to distinguish the goods of one company from another company here we can also say it protect us from deceiving by the counterfeit goods counterfeit other products are there so this trademark was act was passed by government of india in 1999 and because there are some uh, after this uh, 1995 this wto was co comes into existence and for that services were also included in new trademark act in 1999 so that is the important concept of trademark so there are different types of trademark we can say there is certification trademark we can uh, take example of isi iso Uh, 9001 or we can say here egg mark wool mark whole mark all these examples of certification trademark so here the different types are there we will also discuss in detail in next uh, lectures of uh, which are specifically on trademark so collective mark is also there associated trademark is also there service mark is also there for providing services for example in education service or we can say uh, these transport service aviation service or different uh, these uh, trans uh, communication service number of services are there chit fund service is there so we can also come under this service mark so design is another aspect under this intellectual property rights very important concept design act was passed in 2000 where section 2d special define this design what it says design means only the feature of goods it doesn't uh, this concern with internal matter of that particular things it only concern with the outer appearance of that particular particular product 
so when we are talking about the internal thing for example one car is there how much cc engine is there that is concern of patent but outer appearance which appeal to our eyes is concern of this design so it includes feature of shape or configuration pattern ornament or composition of lines or colors apply to any articles whether in 2d two dimensional or 3d three dimensional or in both form it may be in both form by any industrial process or means whether manual by hand or by mechanical by machines or by chemical separate or combined it may be in any form it may be by manual mechanical or chemical which in the finished article appeal to or are judged solely by our eyes so it is the eye which matters here so many things are there in the markets which appeal to our eyes irrespective of their qualities so that is also comes in the design so for that particular there are so many example of cars also where duster car is there honda city is there there are so, so many other uh, these creta is there so every car has its different design no other company can make a trace the copy of that particular car uh, design to its own uh, this company's car so we can also see the design of different mobiles are also there apple company has a different design from oppo or different mi designs so that is also called the design act so the main important thing relating to design is it must be new or original otherwise it will be not registered under the design act so it is given for maximum 15 years time period so 10 years main time period is there after 10 years uh, we can renew for another 5 years so maximum 15 years time period is there and in trademark we have for after 10 years we have to renew uh, this trademark and it can be for infinite period of time you can uh, this take trademark for 100 years 200 years but the precondition is you have to uh, make it renew after every 10 years but in the case of design after 10 years you have to renew for another 5 years if you like uh, if it is convenient to you so that is comes under the design so it should not be no previously published it should not be in public domain and not it should not be published that is the important uh, this uh, concept of intellect design so we have already discussed it must be by some industrial process we have also discussed in section 2d so another important concept is copyright so in copyright it we can say we can define it it is an exclusive right granted to the creator by the state for limited period of time here limited period of time is lifetime plus 60 years and it is octopus in character why i am saying octopus in character because it has a different rights we have economic right we have a positive right we have neighboring right we have a negative right we can say it has moral rights also we will discuss here moral right is important concept under section 57 of indian copyright act 1957 we are saying the special rights of an author so no one can distort no one can destroy no one can amend the act we can say work of any person without his permission so that that is very important thing this is another aspect of uh, copyright although economic right is related to everyone but here moral right is there under copyright act 1957 so there are different uh, subject matter of copyright just i am giving overview of that in another lecture we will discuss in detail the subject matter of copyright so first one is literary work second is artistic work musical work cinematograph work computer work choreography work we can also include in compilation of data also there are so many others apps are also included under this copyright so in literary work we can include novel also we, we can include poem also we can include dictionary also we can include the question papers also we can include different these uh, we can say uh, the lyrics also of songs we can include these dissertation and thesis also so uh, these supreme court has also given judgment relating to question paper or the dissertation or uh, this phd thesis we will discuss in detail there are different forms now artistic musical work all these things are covered under the copyright so here we can say 
this we can see one particular symbol this C symbol on the any CD or any book. So, what it means this is work is protected by the copyright. So, here we can say the registration of particular work is not necessary or mandatory. Copyright is automotive in nature whoever is created a work his work is automatic uh, this protected there is no need of registration of uh, this uh, copyright, but it is advisable you should go for the uh, registration. For example, in the case of infringement you have a prime FSI evidence ki you should go for the uh, this you can file a case you can sue that particular person in the case of infringement. So, these are the you can say limited rights are also there these two important things are there performance and broadcasting right these are also we can called related rights or neighboring rights. So, these are also included under this uh, this copyright. So, uh, one important exception under section 52 is doctrine of fair dealing is there which says about the exception under copyright. So, here anyone can use the copyright work without this consent of copyright owner. Here in the case of education and the re for research we can use copyright work in the classes also, we can show movies to the students for research purpose also, for education purpose also, we can criticize, we can review these things and these we can also report the facts in the newspaper also relating to flood, relating to other uh, things which is happening in this world. There is also exception for the legislative as well as judicial proceedings. So, these are also comes under the uh, these fair dealing. So, some another aspect is there, another type is there protection of plant variety. This act was also passed in 2002, there is specific uh, we can go for the registration of extent variety. We will discuss in detail in next lectures relating to that, we can take example of Bt cotton, Bt brinjal or all these things. We can also say about the these, uh, these potato case of Gujarat which is related to Pepsi, uh, uh, this potato is used for the lead chips that was also this Pepsi has filed a uh, this case against 5 farmers for a fine of 5 crores for uh, 1 crore for each farmer. So, 5 farmers are there although this case was compromised by Pepsi and the farmers of Gujarat. So, another concept is trade secret although there is no relating to this uh, there is no law relating to this trade secret, but it is also important in case of intellectual property rights. So, we can transfer this intellectual property by different methods. You can sell at one time for example, this Sabir Bhatia who invented the hotmail.com sold this to the Microsoft for I think uh, 600 crore rupees in this 1990s. But now uh, you can assign that either wholly or in part and you, you have also this right to give license to number of persons it is optional to you, it depends on you whether you want to sell your house, whether you want to give uh, this uh, your house on rent. So, it depends on you. So, license you have also of many types voluntary, statutory and compulsory licensing. So, here and these are the types and uh, another important aspect is transmission. If we will discuss in detail in every species of this IP in different lectures because this is a 10 series lec uh, lecture series. So, transmission is by in case of death of IP holder or IP owner. So, in the case of death that IP will be directly transferred to the we can say legal representative or legal hires of that IP holder, but in case of assignment or the license it will be given by the uh, done by the act of the parties. We can say it is by the act of parties or it transmission is done by the act of law. So, it is automatically transfer in the case of death or it is by the act of parties in the form of contract. So, that is the important thing relating to transfer of intellectual property rights. So, for now uh, protection of all these things or for awareness of all these things as now we have a global innovative innovation index, we have ranking of 40. For the last 10 years we have come from 80 to 40 now. Why? Because we have passed the this national IPR policy. 
in 2016. We have different objective under this IP uh, policy which was enacted by the government of India. Uh, the most major uh, outset is main concern is IP awareness. So many webinars or so many programs were conducted by the government of India for awareness because so many people in India even scientists or the engineers or the lawyers do not know about the IP or the students are do not know about IP. Now, so many awareness is there and we get benefit from that and now there is no pendency of this IP application in patent also because you, as per latest data. So, these are the main we can say objective where now very good administration. There are so many offices, so many appointments in IP office in Dwarka office or different these uh, offices of this India where now pendency rate or is very less or time period for registration of these patents uh, or the other uh, this IP matters is very less. So, we have to generate this IPR, we have to commercialize this IPR as we have to this we have to take good position or if we want to become Viksit Bharat up to 2047. So, these are the main objective where we can go for uh, these uh, this we have to fulfill this objective under this NPR policy. So, main uh, this logo of this quote of this particular national intellectual property right policy is creative India, innovative India. So, we have to create something new, we have to innovate something new because of that now we will become uh, this uh, developed country by uh, this uh, way of national intellectual property right policies. So, after that and this our secretary of this DIPP is saying ki NIPR policy is set to establish ecosystem in a country conducted to innovation and creativity not only in terms of IP awareness creation, but commercialization this enforcement. This is the major concern. This IIT Kanpur has also a number of patent. I think most of the patents is filed by the IIT Kanpur which is the main thing commendable thing done by the this IIT Kanpur or we can also see there are CSIR or other universities are also they, they, uh, there. They have this framed their IP policy of particular university or particular these organizations. They are also helping and creating awareness or helping to innovate new things and uh, this encouraging the students or the we can say these people or scientists to come to uh, new heights. So, there are different remedies also under this uh, national intellectual property right policy. So, we can say the national intellectual property right policy was passed in 2016 uh, and now we have got uh, 40th rank in global innovate, innovation uh, this uh, uh, index and this is good for us and I hope this lecture will help you to uh, get awareness about all these uh, intellectual property rights and its policy also and its species also. Thank you so much.